Hey guys, this video starts our study of kinetics, and this one is specifically about rates of reaction. How fast do chemical reactions occur? So for our generic chemical uh, reaction, AA plus BB goes to CC plus DD. Remember, the, the lowercase letters um, represent the coefficient in the balanced chemical equation, and the capital letters represent the formula for the compound. So now the rate is, we can think about it as how fast one of the reactants disappears over time or how fast one of the products appears over time. Um, because how, how fast something disappears relative to something else in a chemical reaction um, is related to its coefficient, we want to make sure that when we define our rate of reaction, how fast a chemical reaction occurs, we want to get the same number no matter what we use with either of the reactants or our, you know, any of the products. Um, so we're going to define it this way. The rate of the reaction is equal to negative 1 over the coefficient of a reactant times the change. The, remember the delta means the final minus initial or the change of the concentration of that reactant over the change in time. Um, <clears throat> the negative is here because the, the change in concentration will be negative because it's disappearing, it's being used up. And we want our rates to always be positive. So this, because this term here will be negative, the negative makes this a positive. That will be equal to negative one over the coefficient for another reactant times the change in the concentration of that reactant with respect to time, which is equal to the positive 1 over the coefficient for a product times the change in that concentration of that product over time, and same thing for any other products. So that's a definition of the rate of reaction. Um, for example, in this reaction here, um, um, nitrogen dioxide decomposing into nitrogen monoxide and oxygen. Um, we could write the rate of reaction as being equal to negative 1 over 2 because the coefficient for nitrogen dioxide is 2 times the change in the concentration of nitrogen dioxide over change in time, which will be equal to 1 over 2 because of this coefficient here, this 2 is related to this, times the change in the concentration of nitrogen monoxide over time. This is going to be positive because as this reaction um, proceeds, we're making more nitrogen monoxide, so the change in concentration of this will be positive. Or we could write the rate as equal to just one, you know, one over one, which I didn't write, times the change in concentration of oxygen over the change in time. This is also positive because oxygen is being produced as the reaction proceeds. Now, the rate of disappearance of any product can be related to the rate of appearance of any excuse me, the rate of disappearance of any reactant can be related to the rate of appearance of any product or the rate of disappearance of another reactant. So for example, in our uh, reaction here, the nitrogen dioxide decomposing, how, however fast the nitrogen dioxide decomposes, we can say that the rate of appearance of oxygen is one half of that because we make one molecule of oxygen for every two molecules of nitrogen dioxide that are that decompose. Or we could say that the rate of appearance of nitrogen monoxide is equal to the rate of disappearance of nitrogen dioxide because for every two molecules of nitrogen dioxide that decompose, we produce, make, two molecules of nitrogen monoxide. We could also say that for every two molecules of nitrogen monoxide that are produced, we produce one molecule of nitrogen, uh, excuse me, of oxygen, thus the rate of appearance of, say, oxygen is equal to one half the rate of appearance of nitrogen monoxide, or the rate of appearance of nitrogen monoxide is two times the rate of appearance of oxygen. That's, it's really just going back to stoichiometry. That's really all it is. All right, so let's look at some specific numbers, guys. So um, this is data for the same chemical um, reaction, the decomposition of nitrogen dioxide. And we see that um, this column here is how much time has passed, and these are the concentrations of the reactant and the two products. So at time zero, we start out with 0 0.0100 molar, this is moles per liter nitrogen dioxide, and we have zero moles per liter of the two products. 
After 50 seconds, we have this much left of nitrogen dioxide and we've produced this much of the nitrogen monoxide and the oxygen. And after 100 seconds, 150 and so on. So let's calculate the rates at different times. So after the first, over the first 50 seconds during this time range here, we can calculate the average rate by taking, by looking at, for example, the change in the concentration of nitrogen dioxide. So the change in concentration of nitrogen dioxide over time is equal to the final concentration, 0 0.0079 molar, minus the initial concentration, 0 0.0100 molar, divided by the change in time, the final time, 50 seconds, minus the initial time, 0 seconds. So when we do that, we get negative, because this number is smaller than this, 4.2 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter per second. That's the change in concentration of nitrogen dioxide with respect to time over the average, over the first 50 seconds for this reaction from this data. Um, <clears throat> that's not the rate, got to be careful, because remember the rate is 1 over the coefficient, and because this is a reactant, it's negative 1 over the coefficient. So the actual, if you were asked for the rate of this reaction from this data, this first set of data here for the first 50 seconds, average, you would say the rate is equal to negative 1 over 2, because that's the coefficient for nitrogen dioxide, times the change in concentration of nitrogen dioxide with respect to time. We just got this, negative 4.2 times 10 to the minus 5th moles per liter per second. So if we plug that in, we get a positive 2.1 times 10 to the minus 5th moles per liter per second. That would, that's, that's the average rate of this reaction over the first 50 seconds. We could have also used the, the oxygen, the appearance of oxygen, to do the same thing. So the change in, con for example, we could do nitrogen monoxide too, but I didn't do that one. So the change in the concentration of oxygen with respect to time is equal to the final concentration, 0 0.0011 molar, this right here, minus the initial concentration, which was zero, divided by the change in time, final minus initial, and we get positive because oxygen is being produced. If there's more, you know, at the end than there was in the beginning is 2.2 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter per second. To get the rate, because the coefficient for oxygen is 1 in this balanced equation, it's just 1 over 1 times the change in concentration of oxygen with respect to time, which is the same as this number right here, 2.2 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter per second. Now, these numbers look, I mean, they're slightly different, and that just comes about from rounding from the experimental data. Um, but essentially, they're the same, and they should always be very, very close. I mean, if the rate's the rate, um, no, no matter what you use to calculate it. The only reason they look slightly different, again, is because um, rounding in the experimental data right here. So now let's look at a different um, period of time, from 50 to 100 seconds. So we're going to do the same sort of calculations, only now we're going to go between, 100, between 50 and 100 seconds. So using nitrogen dioxide, the change in concentration of nitrogen dioxide with respect to time is the final concentration, this number here, minus the initial concentration, this number here, over the change in time, final time, 100 seconds, minus the initial time, 50 seconds. And when we do this, we get negative 2.8 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter per second. So the rate is negative one over the coefficient, in this case, one over two, change in concentration with respect to time, which gives us 1.4 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter per second. Doing the same thing with oxygen, change in concentration of oxygen with respect to time over the same time period is 1.4 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter per second. Because the coefficient is one, that ends up being the same value as the rate. In this case, we get the same number. Now look at this, guys. The rate Okay, between 50 and 100 seconds, 1.4 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter per second compared to the rate over the first 50 seconds, 2.1, 2.2 times 10 to the minus fifth moles per liter per second. It slowed down, and that's what always happens. Um, and what the reason for that is that one of the things, and we're going to talk about this in more detail later, one of the things that the rate, how fast this reaction occurs, depends upon is... Um, how many uh, um, molecules are there to react? How, many, how much of the, the reactants or reactants are, are there? Because in order for this to reaction to occur, one thing that has to occur is um, 
molecules have two molecules, in this case, two molecules of nitrogen dioxide have to come together and hit each other. And the more there are, the higher the concentration, the more times that happens um, on average, say, per second. And so the more reactions occur, the rate is faster. And as that nitrogen dioxide gets used up, its concentration decreases over time, then because there are fewer molecules present in that container, they don't collide as often and the reaction does not occur as much and the rate decreases. And it's not a linear decrease, like it's not in this case anyway. So if we were to plot okay, the concentration of the reactant and the two products versus time, that's what this graph is here. Um, the green curve is the nitrogen dioxide, the reactant, it's decreasing over time. Um, the blue curve is the um, nitrogen monoxide, it's increasing over time. And the purple curve is the oxygen, it's increasing over time. So notice the, the, um, the concentration of the nitrogen monoxide is twice that of the oxygen because we see from the balanced equation that for every one molecule of oxygen we make, we make two molecules of nitrogen monoxide. And so the, the concentration of nitrogen monoxide, it's only coming from one place, the decomposition of the nitrogen dioxide, the same place that the oxygen is coming from because we make two molecules of nitrogen monoxide. For every one molecule of oxygen that we make, we get twice as much nitrogen monoxide. Um, so the other thing we can get from this curve is that if we take the tangent to this curve at any point, to any of these curves at any point, um, we can get, um, and we get the slope of that line, that gives us the change in concentration of that species with respect to time. Um, at that point. Now, what we just did a few minutes ago with that data is we got the average change in concentration with respect to time and the average rate, because that's changing as time goes by every single instant. As more molecules of the nitrogen dioxide decompose, um, the rate gets slower and slower, you know, it's, it's continuously. And so what we found was the average rate. This gives us the instantaneous rate at that exact time, right here, at this point, at this time. Right here, in this case, 100 seconds, for example. Um, <clears throat> if we wanted to get the rate, we would take this number and divide by the coefficient. In this case, because this is nitrogen dioxide, this would be divided by 2, this divided by 2, this divided by 1. Notice, this divided by 2 is basically that, right? Because these are... Um, these are at the same at the same time right here 70 seconds um, so now any of you you know calculus is not a prerequisite for this class but any that you any of you that have had calculus recognize this as being the derivative with respect to time all right so let's do an example guys so given this balanced chemical equation um, let's suppose we start with 0 0.124 moles of phosphine pH 3 in a 1.50 liter container. And that decomposes, okay, in 12.4 seconds. Um, that, that much, excuse me, we start with more than that, but that much decomposes. What are the rates of appearance of phosphorus, P4, and hydrogen, H2, over the same period of time? So there's a couple ways to approach this. Um, we can find the rate, the change in concentration of phosphine with respect to time, um, and then divide by the coefficient, in this case 4, to get the rate, and then from the rate we can get the rate of appearance of the two products. Um, we can also, it ends up directly, you know, once we get the change in concentration of phosphine with respect to time, we can also directly use the relationship between the coefficients to get the same answer. So why don't you guys go ahead and um, work this out, and when you get an answer, come on back. Welcome back, guys. So. <clears throat> The change in concentration of phosphine with respect to time will be how much of it decomposes over the, the volume. Um, negative because it's a, um, a, um, a, a reactant. And this is actually negative right here, so this ends up being a, a positive number. Um, <clears throat> the, where the rate is. Um, and so the rate is going to be negative 1 over the coefficient change in concentration of phosphine with respect to time. This was a negative. Um, and so we get 0 0.001666 moles per liter per second. That's the rate. Now, this is the first way to approach this problem. Now that we know the rate, we can easily get the change in concentration of um, hydrogen and, and phosphorus 
because we know that the rate for phosphorus, because the coefficient for phosphorus, the rate is equal to 1 over 1, change in concentration of phosphorus with respect to time, which means that the change in concentration of phosphorus with respect to time is equal to the rate. Now for hydrogen, um, the rate is equal to 1 over 6 because the coefficient for hydrogen is 6 in this balanced equation times the change in concentration of hydrogen with respect to time. So to get the change of concentration of hydrogen with respect to time, we just multiply 3 by 6, 6 times the rate, and we get 0 0.0100 moles per liter per second. Now, that's one way to do it. Another way um, works just as well, I didn't write it out here, um, is to say that, okay, if we know the change in concentration of phosphorus um, with respect to time, um, point, um, well, actually, we don't have that right here because I didn't show it. But we could take that um, times one molecule of phosphorus divided by four molecules of phosphine, and that would give us the change in concentration of phosphorus with respect to time, which would be this number right here. And we could take this times six over four because there are six molecules of hydrogen produced per four molecules of phosphine decomposed. Um, and that would give us the change of concentration of hydrogen with respect to time. And that's all there is to it, guys.